Hello, DDR Jake. Oh. I don't, I, I don't have any issues. Welcome, um, DDR Jake. I was talking about the AI. And I, I have no issues. I, I'd say it, what I think. I have always said what I think, so that's not gonna change. So, to reply to your question, DDR Jake is asking. Other than the colonial feedback that I'm still moving over, how are you finding 1.20? I find it very um, good. Um, my early feedback from when I was allowed to talk about what I think about the game after the release, I said the changes go from, if I recall correctly, something like um, very good to amazing, something like that. And they are, they're, they're really good. The only things that I don't like, I already said to you what were those things. I don't like, and I said it on stream too. I don't like the extra liberty desire that the colonial nations now suffer from development. But you all in already know that. But I was rambling a little bit a while ago, a few minutes ago, because as I was saying, no one gives a shit about what I say, even though I know this game very well. So, months ago, I had a discussion, a friendly discussion, with an AI developer. I don't remember his name, but it's just a question of of seeing the posts in the forum. And I said that, and I even did a movie, a video, showed it to the developers. So I think it was... I don't want to say something that's a lie, by mistake. Uh, I think Joan must have saw, seen it, but I'm not sure, at least the, the, the dude... Um, so the one to be disrespectful, uh, responsible for the AI saw it, and we had a friendly discussion. And I said, back then in one point, I think it was 1.12, 1 1.13 1 or 1.14, and I, it was during those patches that I beat a shit ton of records for the fastest world conquest. So, one tag world, world conquest, and even domination world conquest. And I played a lot, so. I played probably, f I don't know, thousands of hours, I don't recall exactly, and the AI exhibited the best behavior that I've seen the AI exhibit in this game from a strategic point of view. I'm gonna elaborate on that uh, as fast as I can. Even though the AI received um, an amazing improvement, which is its ability to carpet siege, right now it carpet sieges because it can not because it's the right thing to do, it's really dumb. The rant started because of this right here in India. So I took this fort, and this is not this is not nothing, this is not new. I already said it in the forums before, and it can be clearly seen. The AI leaves everything, absolutely everything, gives top priority to carpet sieging when it's the dumbest thing it can do, even if it's the dumbest thing it can do. So because it does it, because it can, not because it's the right thing to do. So, even though it's amazing, r literally amazing, great, I love it, to see that the AI now knows how to carpet siege. And that actually forced me, in the good way, to start using forts, in a good way, a, a, a great way, now the forts are actually useful. There's more depth to the game when the the terrain penalties were reversed. This was a great thing for the game, and I actually said it in the forums, if I recall correctly. It was a great change. So the defenders now actually have a reason, two reasons to build the forts. One, block the AI from carpet sieging the country. Second. If they're placed on mountains, the people will have um, 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 a good. Uh, the defenders will have a, an advantage, just like in real life. People, so everything that makes this game closer to real life usually has a good is good, at least from my point of view. But I'm diver I'm uh, digressing. Like I was saying, the AI leaves everything to go to the unfortified provinces, when right now the best thing to do would be for them, in my opinion, because 
I don't think the AI has any hope whatsoever of carpet sieging this country. Do you? I don't think so. Besides, the AI was supposed to go after strategic important or vital, Im vitally important provinces or economically speaking very important provinces. And what I've seen is the AI go to, to again after three development provinces. It doesn't give a shit about. But again, I'm digressing. What I'm trying to say is that back in 1.12 or 1.14 or back on 1.14, the AI exhibit um, a strategic. Um, and the behavior that I think was strategically very good and made sense, which was to go if it, it couldn't engage the army sieging was not strong enough to engage the army sieging their provinces, they would go it doesn't it didn't matter where, it really didn't matter where, they would go and try to invade the enemies. So, if I declared on a dude over here and my fort was here, yeah, where it is, their mar armies would march all the way to try to go after my fort. Or my forts. What I think it's good about this behavior is because now they are, in, in my opinion, and I don't want to trash anyone's work, but it's, it's really bad from a strategic point of view, the AI goes, is, is invasion happy, so it sends its armies invade either across the seas or when it's to places that are irrelevant strategically or they go for carpet sieging when in fact they should protect their country and that happened back in I'm, I'm almost 100% sure it was 1.13 but I can't I'm not it was a while ago so I'm not sure it was one of those patches it would go to siege my stuff it, if, it, if it couldn't engage my armies and their provinces were not occupied. The moment I occupied the province, they would come back to try to unsiege it. This, uh, this, this was predictable, this was exploitable, but so is this behavior. And I already said it during this stream, how am I going to exploit the Ottoman AI, I'm going to exploit its weakness, this behavior to grab a, a huge advantage for the next war and trash the Ottomans really quickly. And I'm gonna finish in a couple of... Um, I'm gonna finish quickly. What I'm trying to say is that back then the AI would come back and siege the provinces. If it was still not able to engage the army, it would go attack, invade, and so on and so forth. So. A patch later, I, st I started seeing the AI, for example, I was trashing France as, I don't recall, someone weak, I don't know, I don't recall who was it. And I invaded the whole freaking country, while the entire French army was in India. The entirety of the French army was in India. Then I, I talked with the de AI, AI developer and I said to him, well, this is a dreadful behavior. The la la I don't know what you did to the AI, but in the previous patch, the AI could go all the way to India, but the moment I siege the province, it would run back to, to France to unsiege, to protect its country. <clears throat> and it happened 100% of the times, so I don't know what changed. I just know that I played like for a couple of thousand hours, and the AI always exhibit this behavior. Another thing, so this is strategic decision making by the AI is that would also um, I mean it would also reduce the, the stranded armies in the world they always came back to their country so since I think from playing Hearts of Iron 4 the, it's the same strategic decision making it's the same code or very similar the AI sends its entire army to Africa and other places if it had the same decision making whatever was the code back then that was used if the AI comes comes back home when their provinces are being occupied that would even be great for Hearts of Iron 4 because that's the main com one of the biggest complaints in the community is the AI sends the troops away and the country is unprotected so, again, I s back then in 1.14, I think, I saw 
always. AI brings the troops home when the, tro the provinces are occupied and doesn't give a shit about enemy territory. Right now it just goes on invasion mode and fuck it, I don't care about my country. You can have it all. So that's but that's basically it, I'm sure. Um, they prioritize the provinces of vital interest. Yes, they, they do. They do. Um, I'm not saying they don't, but there's maybe a, 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 a mistake in the code. You know why? Because during... you can watch the VODs. During this stream, I only have five... I only have like one region worth carpet sieging. This one. And my gold mines. I, I have watched repeatedly armies march for hundreds of miles, thousands of miles, and I thought, oh, they're going after my gold mine because in my mind I read the the, the, the I read the, the changes in the patch notes, and I know that AI is supposed to go after the the economically vital provinces more, in, more the ones that will do more damage to the player but you know what I const saw constantly was the AI for no reason no apparent reason come all the way hundreds of kilometers hundreds of miles whatever you want to call it or thousands and simply stop in one a tree development province somewhere worthless completely worthless when they had a gold mine right over there, and when they had a gold mine over here, I've seen it. Go watch the VODs. I've seen the AI siege this province, siege this one, and leave the gold mine alone. This is tree development. Tree development. 8.65 ducats per month. I've seen it. I'm not lying. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I don't. I don't lie about this stuff. I'm just. I may sometimes misinterpret it, it happens to everyone, I think, but with regard to this, this is what I saw, and I played this game for almost 6000 hours. Anyway, a good, good, lots of stuff changed that I like, I loved it, and if you're still watch, watching and hearing me after all this time, I would like to suggest an, an, another improvement. Um, People are watching me here live can tell it. I've, I've, um, I appreciate very much the, the lots of stuff here. Like for example, this is so fun for a player that likes to blob like me. This is like having early administrative efficiency. So it is fun. And if we're if we're fighting, if we are fighting wars, we, we kind of like to be rewarded for our efforts and being able to take more stuff. Of course, facing the consequences, because at this point in time, taking this amount of land gives a shit ton of aggressive expansion. But it's fun. These these ages are very fun. I like the, I like the, I like these a lot. I really do. So that's that. Then there's, this is an amazing, another amazing change. I cannot stress it enough. This is so freaking good. Not this one, but yeah, it's, it's the same, uh, it's the same. So I want to build manpower, manpower, I said, misclicked it. There we go, all the provinces sorted by manpower. This is, well, I cannot say how, I'm, I'm happy, how happy I'm saying, I'm, 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 how happy I am for saying these improvements. Another great improvement that I would love to see, and it's, it would make this game so more and so much it's very enjoyable as it is but it would make it m even more enjoyable for me and probably for other players because in my experience and from the feedback that I've received during all my hundreds of hours of streams now and thousands of hours on YouTube is the ability for automated armies to I mean, we already have rebel suppression, right? Why can't you have a mission for the armies to unsiege occupied provinces? Or we have a mission for navies to go after... to hunt down... to intercept enemy fleets. Why can't you have a mission for land armies to go on a hunter seek mode and go kill enemy armies? Automate them, but at the very least I would love to see 
something like this to counter this carpet sieging without the tedium involved of doing it manually. What else? One last thing and I'm gonna shut up unless you wanna ask something else. I really love the... I really love these. It's bloody amazing. Uh, um, it is, no question about it. It's usually it's easier, much easier uh, to grab alliances. We can always we can always see who wants an alliance, and, and we can see that we. I'm not very popular in the world right now. But I want to suggest an improvement, and I I said it in the forum today. I made a thread about it. I don't know if you read it. I tagged you there, but just in case, I'm gonna say it again, again here again. What usually happens? Um, for threatening countries, allies and subjects and even neighboring countries this works beautifully, it works very well. For outraged countries it, it doesn't work very well actually. It, most of the times for my kind of play I find myself forced to do it manually because the AI, the, the, the code has no way of knowing what's going on in my head. Who am I going to kill next? They all have aggressive expansion. So the AI tries to do its best to improve relations with countries that can still go above zero. I think that's the algorithm or something similar. But the thing is, in my mind, I'm gonna want, I wanna want to kill exactly the dudes that the AI is proving, improving relations with. So I, fi I find myself forced to do it manually. Because there's no way with this in this interface to say it. Please go, please ignore country A, B, C or D. So my suggestion is, can we grab another box like this and customize it, like adding, I don't know, for, like for whole religious groups, then we could, to make it quicker, or we could simply add one country at a time, just like we do with diplomats, but if we could add whole religious groups and then do something, um, damn it, what am I'm, I'm, I doing? Or d and then do something like uh, these. So let's imagine there's a, a box coming out of there with these. So this is an entire religious group, right? It isn't, but just just imagine for the sake of argument. So I wanted to imp improve relations with all of them, with the exception of, you know, I could s customize it. So, the next four guys to die are gonna be the ones that I don't want the AI to be improving relations with them. If, this, if that's impossible to implement, or very difficult for whatever reason, we could have an extra diplomat just to compensate for the lack of efficiency of, the, of these, or else I'll have to do it manually all the time. Okay, that's about it. <coughs> yes, I liked it a lot. Uh, um, this is a great patch so far. The only, compl only complaint, real complaint that I have is with the colonial nations. And, and just a small peeve, a small annoyance, very small, with the nerf of the um, spy network construction. But that's not a huge deal, actually. I don't care that much. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, thanks for the, your feedback. Anyway, GGR Jake is, say, is saying, I see where you're coming from on that one. Sadly, that's not likely to get in. Yeah, but the changes are good though. But could you, we please maybe have an extra diplomat to compensate for the lack of efficiency? Because, I mean, the macro is the macro builder is, is, is useful, but if a, a player uses... I don't know, through an idea, through, I don't know, something, something, so that it, I'm not always forced to micro stuff myself, because right now, these dudes are on automation, simply, and because, they're, um, simply because um, there are no more dudes available to improve relations with. I'm at war with some of them, the others have no chance of actually going above zero, and 
I've stopped the AI from improving relations with the country that I'm gonna uh, attack or is irrelevant for what I have in mind. Like, I think it was... I don't know, I don't recall this one. Or um, someone else near it. It doesn't matter, it's very inefficient to use it for outraged countries. But yeah, no, it was this one. It was this one. They have um, a religion that that is really relevant right now for the, what I'm about to do. Okay, I'm gonna continue playing. If you have uh, any other questions, I'd be happy to respond to them. Well, the game is improving with every single patch, so... But, yeah. I'll keep saying what I, what is, what's in my mind. Sadly. <laughs> Apparently only the DRJ gives a shit. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but... Half true, half... Maybe I'm, I'm being, um, I'm half joking or mostly joking. I would love to see that 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 ability to um, to seek armies though. That would make this it would decrease the tedium. But we'll see. Maybe my grand my wish will be granted someday. There we go. They finally heard me and they came back to the the fort. This is what I'm talking about. That's their best decision. Why? That's because well, for first they have no they have no chance in, in hell of winning this war. That's the first one. Second one, the best thing they can do is stall it or sue for peace and avoid war exhaustion. So to avoid war exhaustion they better take that capital back. Just saying. I'm so huge that yeah this is causing me a problem but it's because of the call for peace and attrition not because of occupied provinces. And before they can make any real damage, they'll be sieged. Okay, of course these can be exploited, like I said, now they're nearby and can go and rush them. But that's not why I said this would be a, a good... They have no, they have zero chance, so... They were gonna lose it anyway, but this makes sense from a real-life perspective. From, I mean, com it's common sense. The country is burning, and they, they, like France, their country was burning, and they go all the way to India and don't give a shit. That's wrong. That's my point. Even if they don't stand a chance. Well, maybe the random, no random number generation generator will call me a liar. Right about now, I'm outnumbered. Tribes, time to give them some money. And that's about it. Another thing is the lack of coordination, but yeah, that's whatever. So, let's split him. Oh, 
No, the situation for Jampur is hopeless. It's indeed hopeless. No doubt about it. I, I wasn't. I was not arguing. There's another fort there that I didn't see. I was not. I'm not arguing against it. What I'm saying is, we're seeing this in a small scale. Well, they don't. Where they don't stand a chance. But in the lar in the in the large scale, a large scale war, they do exactly the same. I've played campaigns uh, where the no I'm, for example. I actually gave this example, you can watch the VODs. The beginning of this campaign, I was outnumbered. I don't recall exactly for how much, but it was at, I think it was at the very least 5 to 1. Or around 5 to 1, something around those lines. So, Puni, Janzu. That was not so, as so Puni, but by comparison it was Puni. Defeated the Hoirat, Mongolia, Uzbek and the Timis with the 20 stack. That's, you know why? Because they don't coordinate. They left me alone the whole war, basically, to siege down the Oirat and Mongolia while Mongolia, while the Oirat, was helping Uzbek with their rebels and God knows what the Timurids were doing. Back then in the day the AI would form a, a gigantic stack and would go trash me. That doesn't help any longer. That no longer happens. I think you know what I'm... I think no, I, I know you know what I'm saying, what I'm talking about. Sure, I can show you the timeline. This started like, like a test game in an attempt to break my previous um, best wo time for World Conquest. Test game. I could have done this offline like I usually do when it's a test game. But since this is probably gonna take the best, best part of two weeks, I decided to stream it or else I you, people would not receive any content from me. Of course I failed it, but I learned, learned a lot and that's gonna help me for my next campaign and of course it's a huge undertaking to be able to try to do this with corruption now in the game state maintenance um, states back then there we had no states we could stack religious I religious um, Sorry, religious bonuses. That's not uh, happening now, and well, but there are other stuff that I think I can still do about it. Welcome. <clears throat> of course, it's possible. No, it's pretty flattering. It's pretty flattering that you still play U4, even when our newer games, Stellaris and Hearts of Iron 4, are out there. Yeah, um, I already said it before. I think why I do that. That's because this is right now. Your, this is the best paradox game, basically. Hearts of Iron 4 is a shadow of. Well, I'm not. I'm gonna try. I don't wanna be disrespectful, but Hearts of Iron 4 has to improve a lot to gain my interest. For me to be interested in playing it, it might change in the near future. We don't know. I don't know. Stellaris has exactly this add or has the exact same problem as Hearts of Iron 4, which is a dreadful AI and not enough depth to make it appealing but don't get me wrong Stellaris has huge potential I enjoyed it a lot really I really enjoyed it a lot for the the, the hours that I played it and 
and so I saw and the same thing happened to me with Hearts of Iron 4. The problem is that after 159 hours of playing Stellaris, I beat the game on insane difficulty and conquered the whole galaxy on insane difficulty in like, I don't wanna lie, but like 100 and something years? Around that? Because the AI was a freaking moron. Besides that, I felt like I already had seen everything from that game. Same thing with Hearts of Iron 4. I did insane achievements, insane difficulty, I think. Most people would probably think it was impossible. And I and I did it because the AI is a bloody moron. Or simply the worst AI I ever seen in a Paradox game. With that said, I enjoyed Hearts of Iron 4 a lot during the, pl the time that I played it. But after around 400 hours of playing Hearts of Iron 4, which is like less than 10% what I've played EU4, I felt like I already played everything and I already s seen everything. So, and that happens because the changes that were made to the game reduced its replay replayability. And I even warned uh, Joan about that well before the game was released and well before I, I, I saw how I had I, I grabbed my hands on I put my hands on it. It simply because I know Hearts of Iron 3 so well and from the changes I saw that th the replayability was gonna be reduced. Well in sharp contrast U4 has a gigantic replayability because I mean it's well I don't know what to say you're in you're the developer of an amazing game and I'm not saying this to please you I'm just saying because it's the truth from my perspective the, because of all the replayability all the ideas the synergy between ideas the, the synergy between ideas and national ideas the strategic differences between starting in if in, in um, strategic strengths and weaknesses from starting in Africa or starting in Ezryukyu or starting uh, in the new world. I don't think Europe is very fun by the way because you're just boring blobs but um, it's I mean it's endless the, it's, 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 it's just like it's endless it's a an, an gigantic replayability and um, so I'll keep playing it In Hearts of Iron 4 there's, yeah, DDR Jake is saying, for me it's a lot down to EU4 being strategic from start to finish. In Hearts of Iron 4 you make your strategies only once, then it plays out. Um, yeah, yeah, basically, it, it's not only that, the, the ideas are so varied that we can say, well, this game, I'm gonna go for maximum core creation discount. This game, well, I'm gonna build, grab space marines. Which nation should I pick? Well, let's see. Well, this guy has lots of morale. This guy has lots of compatibility. This guy has lots of this. This guy has lots of that. So, if I mix that with, say, some military ideas or some w different religion i mean the the the, the replay replayability is endless basically it's limitless to the point that i've played this for f i never thought in my life that i would play a game for almost 6000 hours and i did so it must be good or i or i'm or, or i'm dumb or or, or both <laughs> It's 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 good. It's definitely good. I, I just wished for I just wish that Hearts of Iron 4 kept some of the things that made Hearts of Iron 3 an, an amazing game and that make U4 an amazing game, which is which is exactly what I'm talking about. The ability to strategize and have almost endless ways to uh, to play it 
either to role play, to to conquer the world, to play tall, to uh, well, I don't know where to start. So it's it's really great. Hearts of Iron, Hearts of Iron 3 also add also added not as much as U4 right now because U4 has received a lot of love, but Hearts of Iron 3 is the same it has the same time of same type of play exactly the same type of play while Hearts of Iron 4 suffers a bit from well I don't want you to use paratroopers I don't want you to use uh, transport planes I don't want you to use transport ships I don't want you to use these I don't want you to use that I don't want you to use uh, um, lots of technology let's simplify it let's use just half a dozen I'm, I'm being harsh now but it's 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 and that half a dozen of decks give orange orange in, I mean they, they create um, a railroaded path of gameplay that is always the same because there's no choice it always goes through there there's no strategizing it's the same thing playing a dude in Asia like um, Tuva um, that's not where Tuva is uh, around somewhere around here well, you know, Tuva, um, I don't, this is, it's somewhere around here, I don't see it, the provinces are renamed. So, this is Tibet, you understand, probably it's this one. Right. One of these provinces is Tuva, it's the same thing as, as uh, starting in Tuva, somewhere around here. Probably one of these ones, whatever. Or starting in 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 South America as uh, Paraguay, because you know what I have to is pick exactly the same things, the same ideas, the same same text, the same buildings, the same everything. Always it's it's the same gameplay always. And then what happens is that only after 200 hours, 300 hours, we feel like we've played it, the game, though we've seen the whole thing. But that's enough, uh, I think, for. Oh, it's already over midnight. What would you like to see out of you for going forward? Um, I don't know. From from a reduced, from making the game better perspective. I mean, it's not about um, creativity. I'm not talking about creativity right now. I mean, this is this makes the game better, but this involves creativity. Um, what I'm saying is from a functional point of view I would love to see that thing from the diplomats and but that's nothing by comparison with the ability for me to pick one of these armies and automate it because if you're playing in, in if you're playing tall with just five provinces you probably don't care much about automation it's not I mean it's not it's fun. But at some point, when we get really big, we have a big country, and for some reason our fort is taken, you know, from a dude that didn't like the forts, and now building a, for a wall of forts to keep the these dudes out. I would love the ability to automate armies, put them in, like we have to for rebel suppression, I would love them to automatically unsiege the provinces if we push the button. Or another button to automatically uh, go uh, and down enemy armies to reduce the whack-a-mole. It's not fun. It's like fighting rebels. It's not fun. Those would be the two changes that, from my perspective, would make this game even more amazing. Because it would let me focus on what's fun. What's fun for me is to invade other countries, stack wipe their armies, control my units, and you know, f attack someone. It's not fun for me to have 50 provinces occupied and have to do it manually because, well, I need to do it because I need the war score. I need, I don't I can't handle the war exhaustion, stuff like that. So if I could put one army to seek an enemy army that caused the problem, and a few stacks to take the provinces back, that would be absolutely amazing. That those were the two changes that I would make. Of course, if from someone like me that really hates corruption, or at least 
um, hated it a lot when it was introduced in 1.16 then it was nerfed to a more reasonable thing more reasonable um, they brought some sanity into the mechanic you've brought some sam sanity into the mechanic so I don't dislike it as much from a person like me that does not like corruption to say that these two things are, are the ones that I would like to see in the game that's saying a lot because I, I hate r corruption and I hate the gigantic rebel stacks oh there's another thing that I just remembered related with rebels it's why do I hate rebels I hate rebels because rebels are just um, an annoyance they don't give any rewards so if I overextend myself for some reason something goes wrong and I have, I have 1 million rebels spawn in my country it's bloody tedious to go kill them but if I do it if I manage to keep in my country in one piece with 1 million rebels in the country and I do it I have no reward for such thing so if a disaster like that for you could actually gave some reward for my gigantic amount of work to kill them then I wouldn't be so upset so so it wouldn't be so tedious because there's a reward just like when you go fight wars we pr I probably this is probably much more work than actually going to kill in, kill one million rebels because they're like they're like zombies they don't have brains almost it's easy to kill it's tedious but it's tedious but this is also lots of work but this is engaging I'm actually having fun uh, strategizing how should I do it and in the end I'll have my rewards or I'll be f beaten fairly 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 and square you know rebels are just tedious work so if there was just like corruption which reminds me just like the corruption which is unfair in my perspective there was an, an, an amazing change the, that um, why I'm pointing over there um, that actually um, made this bearable so it's not every it's not all bad if we have corruption it's it's like right now I'm paying 20% more for everything with regard to monarch points and that's not good however in my provinces I have an unrest reduction so it's not all bad rebels are bad around the clock or everything is bad about them with the exception of being able to convert to provinces for me whenever I wanted and that's about it thanks for um, dropping by Jay I'm gonna play it a little bit more if, but if you have more questions again I'll I'll gladly answer them but I guess mm, yeah that's it rewards rewards the one I don't want a game easy I don't want a easy game if I wanted an easy game I wouldn't be I don't wouldn't do the kind of stuff that I usually do I just want to be engaged always the 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 game the, the part that is fun in the game is really fun it's really engaging it's really addicti addictive then there's another part that is just tedium so the less tedium the better that's my opinion so unless I <clears throat> don't sleep as much as I wanted to sleep um, today I guess we don't have a war against the Ottomans this, this stream but I really wanted to do it so if I'm gonna do it I need to pick up some speed so thanks a lot guys for my thanks a lot for dropping by the DRJ and patience for all of you to hear me uh, rambling I guess or whatever. <laughs>